Paul yeah. McCarter with Que Pasa, Amigo. Was Michael on. Plecker, Christelle. Hello, Kerry Rock. Hello. Yeah, there's a lot of hey, people Kerry. watching today. Let's rock and roll, J Dubs. Good Monday morning, guys. I'm Jerry Miller, and welcome to the Real Talk with Keith Smith. Thank you kindly for joining us. It's a pleasure to connect with you guys through the I Love Seville Network, courtesy of Yes Realty Partners. You're going to see a new character on Real Talk with Keith Smith, the Swami. But the Swami is going to make his or her introduction himself or herself. I'm not sure what the preferred pronoun is for the Swami. I'll let the Swami figure that out yeah, on it, his it, or it her It would be own. impactful if I knew what a pronoun uh, okay, was. Okay, <laughs> okay. The Swami is coming later in the show, so prepare yourself for the Swami. Before we get to the Swami, Judah Wickhauer, let's go to the studio camera and let's welcome a brother from another mother, a distinguished gentleman, a man who needs no introduction, a guy who can go in any nook and cranny in Central Virginia and have the red carpet rolled out for him. His name, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. Keith Smith. I'm fired up. I can tell. I've been up since 4.45 in the morning. Uh, you win. Legitimately. 4.45 you, you in the win. morning. You win. I got up at 5. A little our, late, a little our, late this morning. Our youngest but, but, but before you go into this, <laughs> hey, I'm doing a, a, a little bit of a KW seminar or oh. a convention down in Virginia Beach. I'm doing this. Would you mind taking a couple days and just following me along and just doing that? I'm with you. Right, right behind. I'm with you. You pay our full hourly oh, rate yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for no, 48 no, no. hours, and I'm going with you. Full, full, full so, rate. So all the time, what happened to this whole love thing? It just went right to, went I mean, right to capitalism. You're asking like me that. to go three hours through a tunnel, manage Hampton Roads traffic. Now, the highlight would be hearing you speak. I will buy speak. the booze. I, I mean, you do that now. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. You do that now. <laughs> right. He's got us rum from St. Martin, which, mm -hmm. which is probably the best rum I've ever had. It's good stuff, yeah. What's it, it called? Uh, so this particular one is called Governor, but... Um, yeah, sure, if you want to. It's um, it's the best rum I've ever had. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, Look at that. That's like cowboy. Call me Clint. Yeah, so Clint this, Eastwood. Yeah, so this is a... Uh, uh, do we have, like, the, the rum cam now instead of... Oh, yeah, uh, it's literally on. It, instead of the that. The crystal ball cam is the rum cam. Right uh, now. Yeah, so it's a friend of ours that... It's it's handmade. It's 10 years old, and he makes it on the mm -hmm. island, and uh, it's it's sipping. It's sipping. It's sipping rum. We oh, had, it's totally sipping rum. We it's, added not, a shot? it's not mixer rum. No, oh my yeah. God. This you, rum you is would, too nice to put anything else with it. You would offend. Right, right. You, you would yeah. totally offend. I mean, if, you're gonna, if, you, if, you're, if you want a mixing rum, what is that? Uh, maybe like a Bacardi? Uh, who knows? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you wouldn't mix that. But this is, this is a after the meal, you have a little bit of a shot, settle your stomach. Is the after the meal one the aperitif? Yeah. That's the aperitif, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I so got, I think I got that. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, I mean, you're just good. Yeah. That's the yeah. aperitif. Viewers yeah, and listeners, is that the it's, aperitif? It's the after. It's what's it, the one before the drink? Is that the cor before the meal? Is that the cordial? Oh God, if you I think here, the she cordial would, is she would before the meal. Am I right, viewers and listeners? Somebody help me out. Aperitif after the meal, cordial before. Is that right? Viewers, listeners, anyone? Ooh, we might have that backwards. What's that? Aperitifs are cocktails served before a meal. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, aper yeah, aperitif is before. Yeah, yeah, it's cordial after. Because I'm breaking the word down. Digestif. Okay. Digestif. Is aperitif is after. Thank yeah, you. And cordial yeah, yeah. Is, is before? Yeah. No, aperitif is before. Okay, aperitif is before. Digestive is after. Is after. Okay. Cordial is... Just it's just cordial. anything? It's, well, it's just a cordial. Okay. Cordial's, cordial is what I am to you so, on a So cordial basis. is what we do to here. Sure. If you can call it whatever you <laughs> want to call it. If it makes you feel better and gets you through the day, we will call this a cordial. Uh, I think it's an aperitif, aper, whatever that word is. Aperitif? Yeah, that too. So, hey, I had somebody send me a text this morning. Okay. Oh, you got, got viewers and listeners rising to the occasion. I'm counting one, two, three, four... Five, eight people correcting me. You can't, you can't make mistakes on this program. That this many, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, aperitif, Judah, is it's a digestive. Before. Or no, aperitif no, no, is before, before digestive. the digestive is, is after. Well, that makes sense because the, the words. Yeah, that doesn't make right, sense. Right, right. Judah Wickhauer keeps us on point. So, do so the, the question becomes what is the traditional go-to digestive, digestive, you know, what, what for is... For me? Well, for you, it's anything with alcohol. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> that's, that's very true. <laughs> it's true. But, but in higher circles, there's an actual um, 
you, you, you would you would drink. Actually, you know what you know what in in Germanic countries you know what uh, what's the, the the shots everybody used to do that tastes like co coffee. Jägermeister. Jägermeister. I love Jägermeister. Is actually a digestive. Jäger. A lot of people have beef with the Jägermeister. You know when a Jägermeister is the best? You're on a ski slope. You do a ski a run. You get all the way down in the mountain or the hill. You go to the lodge. The Jägermeister is as cold as you will ever have it. You rip a Jägermeister shot, you're ready to take another run down another slope. So, uh, now, you gotta balance that. You gotta be, you gotta be careful. How many balance, times, balance would be the you key You gotta be word. careful how many times you go into the lodge. The key word. I'd love to talk cash numbers at some point when we get past that. Oh, we are. The, the, Jason the, Howard on Rio Road is, Jason Howard on Rio Road literally shared a link from the National Mortgage Professional website, nationalmortgageprofessional.com. I literally am counting one, two, three, four, five loan officers watching the program right now from five different firms. Cool. The Thank link you. he shared is a macro link, a national link that sure. says a third of home buyers are paying cash in America yeah. right now. Interestingly, this is a perfect segue into <laughs> the car footprint, Keith Smith. Well, again, single family detached, car, year to date. So that's Charlottesville, Albemarle, Nelson, Green, and Louisa. Those are the jurisdictions. I drop out new construction. So year to date, 28% of the sales. So it's, all, it's not quite a third, but awfully close. Or cash. Interesting, 2022 has got to beat by a couple percentage points at 30%. 2021, a little bit down, was at 23%, which, by the way, is the largest volume of sales of 516 versus 336 this year, by the way. 2020 is the lowest. That was at, at 18. Kind of know why, right? You know, 2% interest. But 2021 interest rates were pretty low, too. You know, they were sub-3 in 2021. But I've been going back to 2015 on a regular basis because I really think as far as an overall market, not in sales price, but in volume, right, and all the other factors in it, 2015 was 21%. So it's only 7% off of this year. So let's call, let's, for simple, simple conversation, let's call about a third. Um, Uh-oh, strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. See, so he's got a sneeze coming. Look at the lights. Say strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. strawberry. So that's the broadcasting trick. From Didn't work. Oh, my goodness Didn't gracious. Work. Good Lord. Didn't work. Damn it. Strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. Totally Look didn't work. I did. I have light right there. I was looking. There's a light right there. Okay, there is a light right there. I was looking. Strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. I didn't you know look. these light bulbs right here? Have I ever told you the price of these yes, light bulbs? Yes, yes. Multiple times. I have? Yes. It's, this is 501 shows. You don't think we okay, talked okay. about the light bulbs by I'm now? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. $100 a piece. A 125 for that one light bulb. Yeah, yeah. I was close. Yeah. And it can't even stop someone from sneezing. And it can't. <laughs> <laughs> God, keep making jokes like that. It's so those funny. Are, those are the ones. It's these are the he deadpans, though. Oh, dude. Yeah. Did, did that get it? Where's your microphone on? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, good. Because he deadpans them. They're hilarious. He, his delivery yeah. is off the charts. The and timing then, is perfect. The timing is perfect. And then you kind of go, hold it. Did he just say that? No. <laughs> Ladies, watching this program, this guy is single, ready to mingle. Let's get this, this man a muchacha. Don't do that. I mean, I, I love the man. I know that. Don't be the yenta. I, okay. I mean, he's asked me to be the yenta. Oh, have you asked him to be I the mean, yenta? Yeah. Uh, See? I mean, he's, he's asked for a little bit. Uh, I would be we got, we've, got more, we've got more Yiddish coming out, because that's, that's an answer. Uh, Dude, with... Is an answer with the the charisma and moxie. I would be a hell of a wingman. You would be a hell of a wingman. I'm sure you've been a hell of a wingman before. Have you not? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm desperately trying not to get myself into. You trouble. know what a wingman is. I right? do know what a yeah, wingman is. Right. I, I wasn't. I, even though we've been married for 37 years, I wasn't married my whole life. Right, but you can still be a wingman and be married. Sure, sure. You can sure. help people meet. Ladies and be married. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you're 100% right. You, or, or 
anybody or for anyone, that. Or anyone, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, uh, you know, we, we're busy enough trying to get people to be married to a home. Oh, yes. So, married so, to the home. So, so here's one of the challenges of being married to the home. It's the all-cash deal. I'll give it to everybody watching the program. But, but, it's, but it's interesting, Please. though, Jerry. You know, I, I expected, uh, like, particularly in 21 and 22... Uh, 2022, I could see it creeping up because mid 2022, you know, the, after the first quarters when the interest rates started going up. But, you know, 2021, definitively, and the loan officers can tell me what the average was in 20, 2021, the first, say, six months of, of 2021, to be at 23%. And then in 15, which I think the interest rates was around four, high four, or somewhere around there. To be twenty one percent. So in one in one way, it does impact the market, but it's kind of been impacting the market on a regular basis over over time. So I just thought that was again. I had a. I'll had, give them the stat. I'll give them the stat for the viewers and listeners. This is the car footprint. Keith, what's car stand for? <laughs> it's this thing that you sit in. It's got four wheels. <laughs> what's and the, the car acronym stand for? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Keith said Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors. There you go. That's what I said. That's what I said. That's what I said. Uh, I'm looking at data. Come on, give me a break. From January 1 until June 12th of 2023, single family detached car footprint, no new construction is included in this statistic. So this is year to date, 2023, of all the deals in the car footprint, 28% of them have been cash. In 2022, from January 1 until June 12th, 30% of the deals were cash. In 2021, from January 1 until June 12th of 2021, 23% of the deals were cash. In 2020, from Jan 1 to June 12th, 18% were cash. And in 2015, from Jan 1 to June 12th, 21% were cash. Keith has made a legitimate comparison to this year, 2023, to the year 2015. Another statistic, and Keith, I'll, I'll get out of here after I give this one. Here's another one we learned last week from Real Talk with Keith Smith. In 2015, guys, there were 795 units sold from Jan 1 to June 9th. In 2023, 892 units sold from Jan 1 to June 9th. This is very similar to 2015. The only difference, boys and girls, the median value. Yes. In 2023, the median value of those units sold 442,000, 2015, 270K. Yeah, so <clears throat> you, you, thank you for recapping that. There's, a, there's another interesting statistic about a single family attached that we maybe it, it might ask somebody else who might show up on the show a little bit later. Oh, a great, a great, the Swami? A great, a great question about that. And I think another question that you can ask that that gentleman who's or person who's going to show up is where where does that person think the total number of sales are going to end up for this year the single swami. family single family detail okay i'll write those questions for the swami <coughs> Gary rock a veteran watching the program all around a thank, plus guy has thank a you for, for and Keith. and i if not mistaken i believe he won a pretty substantial award about being i think the number one uh uh, Philanthropist? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think I remember seeing. His, I don't remember the specifics, but uh, whatever it is, he's number one in my book. So he and his wife Colleen, who's a super mom of two beautiful daughters, are the co-founders of Do Good Seville. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kerry Rock, a guy with a tremendous head for business and a tremendous head for doing what's right, says Keith and, are, and a pretty good-looking dude on top oh, of it. Wow, well, just just absolutely. one of them. Kerry's jacked. I, I, I first met Kerry Rock when I was hosting I Love Seville trivia at the. Millmont Grill. That is now Sedona Tap House. It used to be Sloan's. Yeah, I remember. Carrie yeah. would come. When Carrie walked into the bar, the ladies would swoon, always. Carrie either showed up in a dope Cadillac. Carrie, I had such jealousy of that Cadillac. It was so dope. Or a, like, super deluxe motorcycle. I don't know much about motorcycles or bikes. Maybe, Carrie, you can let me know what that motorcycle was. They got two was. wheels versus four wheels. Right. The Cadillac was so pimped. That's where I met Carrie for the first time. He says, Carrie, he says, Keith, are these metrics uh, to see if these cash offer sales are coming from home buyers moving to the area to purchase? Are these out of area people that are doing this? Man. It's tough to know that, right? Can we figure that out? Would it be the, who would know that? 
So the answer to that is... I guess is, the agents would know that, but how would you accumulate that data? Yeah, the only way you can accumulate that data is actually to make phone calls and go... And you, you, it's just really difficult. We don't have that data metrics. Actually, actually, what I was trying to dig up and find data metrics for, and I'm tr still trying to figure it out, was much was what was the average age of the buyers? That's a great question. In our marketplace. Average age of the buyers. I would say look a lot more like you than they look a lot more like me. That's exactly right. It's boomers. And he said it was a Yamaha striker. There you go. The bike. Yeah. That bike much, was dope. Much like you, my first experience on two wheels was for our 37th wedding anniversary. We took a scooter around the island of Anguilla. And I learned something, Kerry that you need to communicate with the person behind you because when you lean to the right and they lean to the left, mm. that doesn't work out so good. Did you guys fall? <laughs> no, oh, no, okay. no, no, no. But we had a make hard time making our right-hand turn because somebody was leaning, I won't give any names, but somebody was <laughs> leaning to the left and I was leaning to the and right. And she's watching the show. Yeah, of course. And then I got yelled at, how come you're not turning? I go, honey, you got you to gotta follow me which way I'm going. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was, a, that was a little interesting. Two 60-something-year-old people on a, on a scooter zipping around uh, St. Martin. Oh, by the way, you have, to, uh, excuse me, you have to drive on the left, which even makes it even more interesting. And St. Martin? No, no, no. This was Anguilla, which was... Do so you British have to wear a helmet? Yeah. You yeah, do? Yeah. No matter what? They bust yeah. balls about helmets? No, no. They, they, they stick one on your head as soon as you get on the Understood. On the bike. Understood. On so the multiple people are asking the age of these cash buyers and yeah. where they're coming from. <clears throat> yeah. Literally so, multiple people. Yeah. So, so that's, that data I don't have available to me on Paragon. So we've got to figure out a different data source to go ahead and, and pull that. Two things. 100% right. Age. Um, I think I sent you a really good article Yahoo put out about, you know, and we've been talking about this literally for over a year, that the boomers are competing against the millennials and the boomers are winning because they're coming out with cash. Bags of money. But, but only 30% of them, right? So that means 70% are being financed, right? So... Like, uh, did yeah. that math right? That's still a lot, dude. <laughs> you know, Kerry, I am a Marine, so anything over three, I get a little confused. Uh, so 70%. So, so that means 70% are doing loans and are getting, getting through. Now, you got to look at the loan end of it, too, which is another question. Uh, well, how much of that was 5% down, 20% down? Right, you don't really know that because of the data that I'm that I'm looking at. Scott on Wednesday should be able to help us a little bit on that. Um, but it's a great it's a great question. I was I was looking for data. As a matter of fact, I was reading through the NAR data this morning. On is there anything that can help me out with the average age of the buyers? This this Carly Carly Wagner, this is right up your alley. Woody Fincher, right up your alley. Dino, this is right up your alley. Johnny, right up your alley here. Uh, this is coming from. Uh, I'm gonna butcher your name. I'm gonna say Bobby L. I'm not sure how to say your last name, sir. So I'm just gonna say Bobby L. Haven't you gentlemen both made references in past shows that a lot of these guys are saying they're gonna buy with cash and then up just financing the deal anyway? Oh, oh. Isn't that, and then he also says, is that a bluff or is that a way to tip the scales in your favor? It's not a bluff. It's a way, certainly, to tip their, the scales in their favor. You want to play? The, you know more about this than I do. I'll stop. This is from Bobby. Bob. He l listens to the show. Obviously. Yeah, I know. That's a, what, one thing we've learned with this program. Oh, right? my yeah. God. I know. I know. Uh, and, 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 uh, lives you know. on the internet forever, and a lot of people uh, watch it in real time or afterwards, and they hold you account. <laughs> well, and it also makes me smarter. Yeah, because we have to be on our A game. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. So it's interesting. So... It's, it's a strategic approach. Okay. Walk us through it. So I don't, I don't want to get too much in the weeds on it. Okay. But our, Why is that? Because everybody does it differently? No, because the nuances are pretty detailed. Okay. Our contract uh -huh. actually allows you to pivot how you're going to purchase through the process. Okay. As long as you notify the other side, this is what you're doing. And as long as it doesn't change the terms of the contract. Okay. So what that means is, you know, I can write a deal, I could do cash. So in order to do cash, I have to prove, um, demonstrate funds. So I'm buying a house, I'm picking a number, 
five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. When I do that contract, I have to include a proof of funds from my lent from my bank saying I got five hundred thousand dollars cash. So the deal is set. Now, that doesn't mean I can go out and get a 50% loan or 75% loan as long as the closing dates don't change. And at the end of the day, it's cash to the seller anyway. I'm allowed to pivot and go do that. Where the trick comes in is where, well, you know, you know, you can't, you've got no, uh, like, we, since we haven't checked that off, appraisals doesn't impact impact it because we're not doing financing. All there it allows you to do is pivot to something else. It's it's kind of nuanced. It's a great way to win a deal if you got cash. And then if you want to keep some of your cash you can refine you can go ahead and finance a portion of it. But it's it's got to close on time and the terms of the contract can't change. Does that make any mm -hmm, sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This has come in. How many of those deals are shaped that way? Bobby's follow up. How would we know that? Could we know that? So he's no. basically asking if, Keith, you're saying 28% in 2023 from January 1 until June 12th. Let's call 12th, it 30% we'll round 28%, we'll call it 30% 30, 30 for the sake of a talk show. A third of the deals are cash. Yeah. How many of those third of the deals well, are cash are actually all cash? So if it's showing up as cash, then they it's used ca all cash. It's cash. And so it's not in this scenario. Okay. It's, it's cash. There you go. You just answered Bobby's question. It's cash. So that those numbers, ladies and gentlemen, are straight money being used at the closing table, no loan. Correct. Now they could go and refinance post closing. Yeah, but that's that's beyond that's beyond what the Paragon can provide. Yeah. Your system, your data analytics infrastructure. But but no, if it's showing cash and it closed cash. Understood. Um, I learned from you. I just but, learned that from you. But you know. You can pivot it uh -huh. to say a conventional fifty percent down post closing. No, no, no. During the contract. Oh, during. Okay, understood. During understood. the contract process, okay. then that's not cash. Now that's a conventional, a conventional loan. And it shows up in Paragon. It as shows. Up, it shows up as conventional. Okay. Yeah. There you go. It, it shows up as. Uh, that's good info there. Yeah. Conventional arm, conventional fix, FHA, other USDA. So there's multiple different. So when we close this. Right, all this data is dependent upon agents putting information in accurately, right? That's why, you know, through the MLS system, we're so strict and so um, on top of it amongst our agents to make sure data, good data in, it's good data out, bad data in, bad data out. So it is, it, it's different different breakdowns on the type of, type of loans. This is that. a great follow-up question. Um, are you ready for this one? Damn, the viewers and listeners are... Christopher Sherling says, interest rates are higher now than they were this year, but the number of cash deals, Jerry said, has gone down from 30% last year to 28% this year. That's you would think the cash deals would be higher with rates being, as Jerry has said, 2x higher than last year. What do you attribute to the cash deals actually going down year over year? Great question. I have some ideas for that. That's a great question. So try the question again. So he's basically saying it was 30% cash deals last year so, when rates were last year in the threes. Well, no, no, no. no rates no, no, last year were no. in the threes in Q1. Yeah, correct. In Q1. Correct. They started going higher. Dino, um, uh, Scotty, help me out on this. About the end of, the end of Q1. End March, of Q1 April. into Q2, then rates started going up. Summer of last year, we started going. No, they didn't going, go up. They doubled. Yeah, they doubled. Q2 yeah. in the summer, they doubled. Yeah. All right, so that's... So, so, so what you have now is, and that's why I tried to say earlier, you know, 20, 2022 is kind of a, you know, if you're looking at rates only, it's kind of a 50% of the last six months was at that seven, six to 7%. The other 50% was at 3%. So it was a transitional, transitional, transitional year. My suspicion is you'll probably see if you really go look at transaction by transaction or month by month or week by week, you probably will see, you know, in that March, April point, there was a huge spike in cash when the interest rates went from three to six. People just jumped in the market with cash. Then I think it kind of settled itself back out. I think you will also 2021 see is the one you really want to compare it to. Okay. 2021 rates were three. Let's, let's call it three percent. Call it three. We're at twenty. We were at twenty-three percent. All cash in twenty twenty-one. But that was a reflection of how competitive the landscape was. But but here's the volume difference. Okay. It was five hundred and sixteen sales in twenty twenty-one versus three thirty-six. I didn't do the percentage on that. But 
you know, it's it, this is this 30 to 40 percent volume decrease. I think one of the listeners and viewers were talking about Michael Plecker, one of the Shenandoah Valley's finest backstops. I'll get to your comment, Carly Wagner. It's time that you get a moniker, Judah. We need a nickname for Carly Wagner. She makes the program better. You got Jason Howard, the king of Rio Road, Michael Plecker, one of the Shenandoah Valley's finest backstops. Dino Russell's watching the program. You're going to get a moniker too, Dino. I got to figure out what it's going to be. And Diamond Dino. Diamond Dino from Keith Smith. Look at That's that. That's huh? good. Diamond Dino for right, Keith. Write that what down. What do you make of that one? Diamond Dino Russell. I like that one right there. Um, all right. I'm gonna what was the other one that we're missing? Uh, Carly Wagner. We need one for Carly. She's mm. a badass. Uh, Michael Plecker. Something with marvelous has to be in that. Some you, you love that adjective, marvelous. Mar marvelous. Go ahead. Let's, what, what does Michael Plecker have to uh, say? Michael Plecker says this. Uh, maybe because there were a lot of corporate cash deals buying up properties in order to create a rental portfolio and corporations borrow money to make those cash deals. You buying that? I, I hate to disagree with Michael, um, but we don't really see a lot of corporate purchases right. in here. Right, not in car. Yeah, not, not in our footprint. You, you might see some LLCs and small thing, but when, when he says corporate, I'm thinking like, you know, the Black Rock. I think he's talking like REITs. REITs yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I, and I don't see that. I, I think just my takeaway on it is we're only 5% delta between 2021 and now, right, percentage-wise. So there's only 5% more cash deals that happen and let's, let's say 2021, 2021 was the apex, was the peak, right? And we, just, we could just tell it by the volume of units, right? I, was 2021 the apex or was Q1 of 2022 the apex? So, so I don't know that because I'm breaking down a six-month. Because Q1 of 2022 was still bananas. I'm just looking at six, this. I'm looking at a year-to-date, six months and 12 days on it. But, but it, the, the other reason why I think we're back at 350, uh, 2015, the volume of units that have sold year to date right now is 336, 329 and 15. Pretty damn close to it. I, I think, well, that might be a question for somebody else, but, but uh, I think, you know, I think the next thing we need to talk about is what the total volume of sales is going to look like. In. Does that mean the Swami's coming? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm Keith Smith has named one of our favorite listeners Diamond Dino Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that nickname. Diamond Dino. Diamond Dino Russell. Yeah. For a great that man might right be now. a little bit of a leftover from I I, I binge watched last night um, Ted Lasso oh. and the Diamond Dogs. Oh, I thought I thought it was a reflection of Diamond Dallas Page, DDP. No, you know no. who Diamond Dallas Page is? I, I don't. I was I was thinking Ted Lasso. Diamond Sorry. Dallas Page. <laughs> Judah, do you know who Diamond Dallas Page is? Vaguely. He's a wrestler. Yeah. One of my favorite yeah, wrestlers, yeah, yeah. along with the Luchadores. Yeah, yeah. Rey Mysterio, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, Carly would, Wagner says know. this. Carly, you need a moniker. We've already come up with a moniker so what, for Diamond what Dino Russell. What rhymes with Carly? We've got to figure out what rhymes Carly? with Carly. No, but it's got to be. No, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to rhyme. Jason Howard's the king of Ryan Road. Okay. Michael Plecker's the Shenandoah Valley's finest backstop. Oh, uh, okay. Carly Wagner says, less folks selling their high equity homes and moving, volunteering. Because of increased pricing and less demand, more of the potential cash buyers are sitting tight with their current homes and equity is my guess. I think that's 100% true. I think what she's saying is right. She's basically saying this. People that got 2.3 2 point mortgages, Well, we, we're talking percent. about volume difference. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's that's, that's... saying why there's less cash deals. Here's her prediction of why there's less cash deals. The people who could do the cash deals, a lot of us that are sitting on stacks of equity, stacks of on paper wealth, not wealth at a bank, but on paper wealth, real estate wealth. But let me We're ask... choosing to just maintain our house let... instead of sell our house and then take that pile of money and buy something else because rates are too high. So we do this a hundred times million times a day or week and you and I did you expect that number to be a 28 percent or did you expect it to be higher the cash one year to date did you expect to see more cash deals in the market than 28 percent I thought um, there would be more cash deals this year than last year and I thought there would be more cash agree. deals this year than 2021 yeah. because of the seven percent sting of the interest rate yeah. where in 2021 the sting on the interest rate was two and three so I'm when I shocked that it's not so when I did this at 5.30, that's what I expected it to yeah. see. 
And uh, it may be a reflection of price, Keith. Median value now 470. The cash people are bringing to the table is substantially more than it was. Yeah, but it's only a two percent delta, brother. From 2021 to 2023, the delta in values is much larger than two percent. That's my point. So I, I, yeah, okay, I follow you. So what you're saying is more cash, le more more price, less cash. Deal. Yeah, because it's yeah, so yeah. expensive to buy something yeah. now versus two years yeah, ago. Yeah, what yeah. have we seen? Like a 25 percent appreciation in value in two years? And car in the mm -hmm. Almore, how about Almore County? Is it 25% appreciation in two years? That's probably light. Yeah. Is that light? I, I, yeah. I, can you tell that? I'm, you can tell that with Paragon. I, I can, but that's going to take some time okay. to put together and doing that live is a bit. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 2021 versus 2023, I would bet Almore County's appreciated at yeah. least 25%. Yeah, we, we could. We could easily look that up. We actually probably did that on the show, and I got probably have it, the data in some book or spreadsheet, spreadsheet in here. The bottom line is, it's definitely upper double digits, right? You know, look, you know, twenty somewhere in the twenty to thirty percent, thirty percent range. Um, comments, bring them in. Fact, comments. I'm trying to keep up with all these comments, guys. Yeah, all I got to uh, do is sit here and look pretty. All right, I'm 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 doing the best I can here. Todd Rath. Hey, you know, Todd. Uh, owner of Blue Toad Hard Cider. Hey, vote for Todd and Blue Toad. Blue Toad Hard Cider. He's the king of cider is his nickname. He's a real estate investor at Smith Mountain Lake, and he's an all-around nice guy. Uh, like Kind Exchange could have played into it as well. Like Kind Exchange, a starker exchange, a 1031 exchange. The 1031, <laughs> named after the genius who created it, starker. The starker exchange, as my yeah. dad calls it. He's yeah. a CPA, my dad. He says the Like Kind Exchange could have played into it. But really, there was a pile of northern money coming into our area where homes sell for double or more in the north and a lot less down here. That is true. I just, that is, that's our neighbors. So, so, Literally, that's our neighbors. Todd, I've been doing this since 1987. It's always been the northern buyer that comes down, down in here. But it was more prolific over the last, because of COVID. The pandemic drove Oh, momentum and I don't like Monticello. What do, you think, what do you think everybody has a funny accent for? Lake, Lake Monticello. Lake Monticello is a unique animal, though. And it is. Uh, but I, I, I'm just flabbergasted that we're only at 28%. Me too. I, I thought it really, would be way higher. really expect. Now, keep in mind, just I, we need to be clear about this. This doesn't include new construction. I actually pulled new construction. They are, that's at 30%. So it's somewhere, it's awfully close. It's at 30% of the total sales uh, on that uh, was um, to cash. But I just, I really. I really expected that number to be substantially higher than 28%. Um, Jason on Twitter said, Diamond Dallas Page ruled. This is uh, Jason <laughs> who's got an uh, alarm clock for a profile picture engaging on Twitter. We appreciate your comment here. Diamond Dallas Page did rule. He's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Judah, can, you have a three shot ready to go? Yeah. Let's go to the three shot. Who is your favorite wrestler of all time, Judah Wicker? My favorite wrestler of all time. Mine was Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio, what he could do off the ropes and in the air, Rey Mysterio was an effing acrobat. I mean, he was amazing. Diamond Dallas Page, obviously for the pomp and circumstance, he was amazing. Uh, I loved Harlem Heat, the tag team uh, duo of tremendous proportions. I could talk wrestling all day. Who was your favorite wrestler, Judah? Oh, man. I don't know if I ever had a favorite. I just, uh, you know, <clears throat> I, remember going to a, I remember going to a show in Maine and I was in junior high and we were cheering for all the bad guys and we had a bunch of adults behind us get really angry and we were there with our Bible teacher this skinny rail of a guy did he say Bible oh yeah oh yeah he's, he's telling the truth <laughs> keep going Judah. keep going and uh, the Bible teacher stands up turns around and tells the guy if they the guys if they have a problem they can take it outside and they sat down and they shut up. There you go. <laughs> and we all had a lot more. Gotta watch out for, for those guys. Can't carry Your it. Sunday school teacher took you to. A, no, uh, this is. Uh, I was going. This is vacation Bible school. No, I was going to a, a Christian school, and this was a teacher who taught Bible. Cool. That's, That's good. Bible class. Was he very muscular? No, he was a skinny rail of a guy. Okay. All right. Well, he was worked up apparently. I know. I know. I know less about wrestling than I do motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to real estate. Let's get back to real estate. You now, if you want to talk about walking from an apartment to go watch the Mets or the Yankees play as a kid, then I'm in. But, uh, yeah, no. I, 
I'm sorry. This is Jerry. No, no, no. Jerry, Jerry, ADD. Apparent, apparently, after 501 shows, ADD wears off on other people. Uh, Jamie Turner, my boy right there, Jamie Turner. Ray Mysterio was my second wrestler. Ray versus The Big Show? Come on. Insane entertainment. Dude, I have incredible memories of watching Mysterio and The Big Show. I love, love, love wrestling, certainly in my younger days. Uh, Michael Plecker says, your wrestling name would be Keith. The Creskin Smith. <laughs> Jamie Turner also likes Stone Nothing Cold Steve Olsen. Huh? He's the mayor of Gordonsville, Jamie Turner. Carly Wagner says, The Big Show has a sitcom aimed for kids now. That is amazing. I would rather watch The Big Show in a sitcom aimed for children than what my oldest put us through watching Blippi on YouTube for two years. Good At least God. it wasn't Blippi's Blippi. Blippi's the worst. At least it wasn't Borny. Uh, what? Blippi? Blippi? Have you seen Blippi? No. Blippi is... Is, is, is like stabbing your eyes with a number two pencil 1,000 times. The but it was my The, fa the fact show. that you know that what that would feel like is, whoa. Watch Blippi for an hour. And the shocking thing is, this guy has created a caricature of himself, this guy Blippi, and look at what this guy has done from a business model. He's clocking like $60 million a year in revenue just for being a joke of himself on YouTube. He's doing this through YouTube ads, through a branded merchandise and toys that he sells, and he literally has, has, has picked people that look like him that play Blippi at arenas all around the world that sell tickets. They buy tickets to see knockoff Blippi perform at the John Paul Jones Arena. He is literally one of the most annoying people you ever meet. He's created a $60 million a year. And we know a lot of people. We know a lot of people. We know a lot of people. Talking about that, we talked about that on the, the contact thing. Judy, you need to get your contacts up over 200 instead of where you're at over there. That, he's that, he's that, working on it. That'll help with the... Uh, we try to encourage him to go to the 231 Fest on Sunday. I heard all about that. Saturday. I heard about all that. The man had VIP tickets. I heard all about that. A plus one at the door. He uh, had a seat with his name on it. A seat for Liza with his name on it. $280 in free merch waiting oh, for him, you didn't and take, the plus one. You didn't take Liza? Oh, that's not good. He, no, he was doing other things. There you go. Good for you. He was doing other We're things. We're putting Judah in the spot. He was doing like, other we can't, things. We can't do that. Wait, he was doing other things. I have no problem with what he was doing. Go ahead. No, I, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm flabbergasted we got off on on uh, wrestling, but you know, I'm, I'm getting an education, so this is reciprocatory. I've been educating you about uh, about real estate for a couple of three years, four years, and oh, now I'm learning that. 500 I'm, shows. I'm le 501 today. I've had a PhD in real estate thanks to you. <laughs> I mean, how, you've been in it for 37 years, I have and been. for the last almost five years, I've been able to spend 90 minutes on Monday, 90 minutes on Wednesday, 90 minutes on Friday. And this guy texts me every day at four in the morning. No, I do not. <laughs> I only did that like a dozen times. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's been truly my pleasure. And then I wander a little bit, which <laughs> I tend to wander on, which you hate, but I wander on vacations from time to time. Uh, Jason on Rio, aside from census data, is there a way to see Almoro County demographics? Percentage of boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and such to see how the makeup of the county has changed over the years. It's a great comment. I would imagine it's it's older. So this is a great great question. Question, great comment, great discussion. You know who that would be a good question for? Um, let me make sure I get his last name right. Well, and look, Diamond Dino might be able to help me with this. His well, name is um, hold on one second. Hamilton. Hamilton. What is your last name? It's the red shirt. Uh, okay, Hamilton Lombard. Who's a hell of a squash player, by the way? I'd say totally, Hamilton is what? It's Dean, totally like the red a four, shirt. Four five, four six, four six five. Hamilton Lombard is a. Uh, what is Hamilton's exact title? Hey Judah, how you doing over there? Hamilton Lombard. <laughs> He's off on a tangent. Oh no, no, this is the guy who can do it. He works for the Weldon Cooper Center That's, in demographics. Thank you. If you would let me, I, I've been trying to get this out. He's a demographics researcher. There you go. At the Weldon Cooper Center, Hamilton Lombard. Well, Weldon. Or, Four six squash player, I'd say. Weldon Cooper is the yeah. thing to do it. And one of the things that I'm working with with the RHP, Regional Housing Partnership, with the developer incentive is I threw out, because we don't have this data, but Weldon Cooper can do it. I threw out to the Albemarle County Board of Supervisors exactly what you talked about is can you do a white paper similar to what they did for the DOD, right? which they broke down age. I mean, it was, if you've had an opportunity to read that, it's super uh, efficient, indirect, direct, the age, wh where they're coming from, 
But, you know, somebody's going to have to spend a lot of money and time and hire Weldon Cooper to go ahead and, and do that. I've been trying to push the Regional Housing Partnership in Albemarle County that way. Because, frankly, that's great data oh, for them to have. Because what's, what's the number one... But you don't... Go ahead. The, what's the number one local jurisdiction elected officials topic that they really talk about that impacts their voters and, and their, their constituents the most? What's the number one topic? Land. Land use? Land use. Okay. Is that the number one topic? Uh, yeah. Uh, you Do know, you think land use is the number one topic? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you talk to an elected official, that's... This, this election cycle? Is it gun no, violence? No, no, no. Just is general... Is it land use? Is it taxes? Is it upzoning? No, well, that upzoning is land, land use. use yeah. Taxes are connected to land use. Okay. All right. I'll give you land use. But it would be budget would really be number one, right? Because that's... that's I'll you give know. you land use. We're truly going to see the mood of this community if Bob Fenwick gets elected. And I'm not saying Bob Fenwick's going to get elected. Well, it's interesting. I'm trying to put something together for Friday. And Bobby I'm, Fenwick. I can, you want me to text him right now? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about after it because, because right now I've I got... Can he's one of my contacts. Yep. <laughs> I, I, okay. I got 4,800 of them. You have 5,800 of them. Yeah. Uh, you want me to text Bobby Fenwick? So what was in the breakfast this morning? I, I've been up since 4.45 <laughs> uh, yeah, in the morning. Yeah, 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 I legitimately yeah, yeah, have yeah, been yeah. up... Yeah, yeah. For almost seven hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our youngest kid. You, you put in a whole day already. Our youngest child legitimately woke up at four. What time do you normally get up? Not 4.45. There you go. Our youngest child started waking up at, he's six months old and change, started waking up at four. We have the baby monitor still. Baby monitor is evil. The baby monitor is evil. There's this thing you can unplug it. It's I, unbelievable. You try unplugging the baby monitor, you know what's going to happen to yeah, you. Yeah, your wife will kick my ass from here. Dude, <laughs> I'm not touching that baby monitor. Yeah, I get it. I, no, terrifying. I get it. I will not touch the baby monitor. Yep. So at 4 o'clock, we turned it down to the audio level 1. From 4 to 440, restless, the most annoying noise in the world. Dad went up at 445. Bambino said, I'm ready to go. Hey, Dad's up. Yeah. That's it's, what happened. It's funny. That's what happened. When I was up doing the race with the grandkids, I don't know what made me think of this. I guess the story about that. So, so uh, Vienna is two and a half years old. So I tease her around a little bit. It's a New York thing. I say, "Hey, meathead, how you doing?" Right. That's what I call a meathead. Um, on it, you know, it's an Archie Archie Bunker seventies kind of thing. Um, so I woke her up, and she opened up her eyes, and she goes, "Hey, meathead, how's it going?" That's awesome <laughs> to me. Jamie Turner shared a link for a case study in Gordonsville. Um, I will, Keith, do you have your DMs open? I want to slip into your DMs right now. I'm going to slip into your DMs. Do you have your Facebook DMs? I know open? we're close, but damn, that's a little close. <laughs> I'm going to slip into your DMs right now. Are you, I don't get know. Facebook Messenger open. Oh, I'm going to send you a Zillow link from Jamie Turner on a case study in Gordonsville. You yeah. love case study. Um, this is a whole- We got the AC on in here. The AC, is it hot? I'm sweating. I mean, Judah's got a sweater and a button-down shirt and an undershirt on right now. I'm sweating. All right, all right. You, you do some talking right now. Judah, you do some talking. I'm going to go put the AC on. Keith, here we go. No, no, I'm only kidding. You guys carry the show. <laughs> Let me see what we got. Carry the show. Main Street. Oh, I know that house. That's, um, that, that, it, didn't that used to be a restaurant that made some of the best fried chicken? Yeah. What was, what was the name of that restaurant? Thank you, Jerry. Um, Jamie, what? There, it used to be a restaurant. You're talking Champion? No, 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 no. Um, it was year. Maybe I, maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe it's the wrong parcel. So what's what's the? What? No, this is not the house. Different different property. Different property. But there uh, used to be a really. And Jamie would remember it. I remember. Oh God, it was like 20 years ago. It was the best fried chicken ever. It was in Gordonsville, and it was like right next to. Where Paul Manning started his. Uh, Jamie would know. He's near yeah. Gordonsville. So, what's the question? Uh, well, he went. Okay, so here's the question. Jamie's asked this. Man, there's a lot of comments here. Um, Keith, you were thinking of the Tolliver House. That's it. That's it. That's it. The Tolliver House. That's it. Freaking awesome. You know the Tolliver House? Oh, well, that was decades ago. Okay. Uh, awesome fried chicken. I think it was only on a certain day, if I remember correctly. Um, so he shares a link to like Jamie Turner. Like he says, why isn't this selling right now? It's right on Main Street in Gordonsville across from Champion. Used to be a part of PBM, 
the Paul Banning yeah. campus. Yeah. Do we think it's overpriced? Does it have to be cash? 220 days on Zillow. If anyone wants to look at the link we're talking about, the listing we're talking about, I'll share the Google, the Zillow listing. It's on my personal Facebook page in the comment section. It's I'm putting it on the I Love Seville Facebook page in the comment section. Well, two, two. I Love Seville group in the comment yeah. section. Go two, ahead, Keith. Yeah, one thing that's right off the bat, it's a Northern Virginia listing. Um, don't know if that's migrated into car. I can tell Get you. Get out of town. It's well, a Northern Virginia well, well, agent well, that has well, it? Well, I know, I know it's because I can tell by the MLS number. Oh, my gosh. That, it would be hilarious if it no. was a Northern Virginia agent that forget, forgot to put it in the car MLS. Uh, that would be a case study and why you use local agents and yeah. not out-of-market agents to sell your home. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go to the car. Out. I'm going to go to the MLS. I, I'm over it. I'm already on it. All right. So no, it, 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 it's in there. It's in the MLS? It's, it's in the MLS, okay. yeah, yeah. That'd be hilarious. Yeah, so why ain't it selling? And comments are coming in fast and furious. Yeah. And I hear the Swami is coming. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Carly says, uh, Jamie, it's been removed and pending a couple times. It yeah. could mean there's a major defect. Yeah. And she also said it's posted in car. Yeah, it is, yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking at it. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, went into pending March uh, it was actually the pending it was in was um, uh, taking backup, so that was uh, active with the kick with the kick out, and it uh, was on court. Yes, yeah, it was back in January. It went into pending. March it went into pending. Uh, she's she's one hundred percent. Carly's right. all over it. Yeah, Car Carly. The Carly needs a moniker. I, I gotta I gotta whatever I gotta find out. It's it's gotta be connected to to freaking awesome in some way. Because she brings some pretty awesome information. Look, I, I think I think it's location, right? What's the six things? Location, price, features, condition. So I think if you take a hard look at that, um, I think the location is is number one. It looks like a spot on the. I don't know exactly where it is on Main Street, but it's the location. It's probably overpriced. They dropped it from three twenty five to three fifteen on it, but it's been on the market for two hundred and eight eight days. Let's see if there's anything in there. Yeah. Um, I'm sharing it on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on yeah. YouTube, on iTunes, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Fountain app, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, 15 Facebook pages, 15 Twitter accounts. We're putting it in stories as we speak on mm. every platform. It's this listing is going to have more exposure it's, by the time this show is over than any, any time it's had since it's gone. It's out. interesting. Um, Whoever's selling it did the right thing. There's a full-blown current survey. Uh, yeah, as of end of 2022. Uh, I wonder if it's commercial. Hold on, let's see. Mm. Car downtown. I mean, right downtown. No, no, I wonder if the zoning is I commercial. I bet you it's zone. It's got some commercial flexibility. Uh, I, I'm sure it does. She says it actually fronts a cul-de-sac, but garage faces Main Street, so yeah. approach and curb appeal is affected. Yeah, I, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Good stuff right there. Yeah, so uh, it, it's, it's lo number one is location, right? I think if you put that someplace other than that location, it probably sells. And then the, because it's not in the right, lo you know, maybe location's the issue, um, then you know, price, features, and conditions start kicking in. I was going to take a look at it real quick on the GIS to see what the zoning is. Uh, remember, the Swami's got to make an appearance today. Yeah, I know that because I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, thank you for the AC. I'm starting to cool off a little bit. Is it cooling off a little bit? A little bit, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if it's on the fritz over here. Yeah. I, I really hope it's not on the I, fritz. Judah secretly is hoping it's on the fritz. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. The only reason why I think I thought it was commercial because it looks like looking at the pictures, it has a, a handicap ramp, but I may be, I may not be looking at it. It definitely looks like a storefront front, at least a portion of it that I'm looking at. But yeah, it's probably location. I would suspect. Um, should we welcome the Swami? If you want to, we can go ahead and do that. I, mean, I think the Swami has a couple of a couple of uh, has two questions that it needs to be asked. Okay, okay, on hold on. End. Before the Swami does anything, Judah, are we on a one shot on Jerry? Let's one shot, Jerry. We are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, real talk with Keith Smith is about to do a segment that's never done before in the history, of the, in the, history of the I Love Seville Network. We are going to try to see into the future. 
We do not have a flux capacitor. We, we do not have a DeLorean, and we do not have Doc oh, Brown in our contact list. Are we ready to show him off? Not yet. Don't bring the Swami in yet. I have to build anticipation. <laughs> I have to build excitement, <laughs> and I have to get people ready for the first time in the history of the I Love Siegel Network. The Swami is on set. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all sizes and all intellect levels, Q Smith is no longer on set. Now on set, the Swami. The Swami. Hello, Swami. Hello. How are you, Swami? <laughs> I'm doing pretty How good. How are you doing, Swami? I'm doing really good. I've been asked. What is going on, Swami? Uh, you know, I was asked to come here to make a couple of predictions. And, you know, I got my star and my crystal ball. Hello, Hold, Swami. On. Hold on. I have to be careful. I'm get myself a ball. <laughs> crystal ball. <laughs> Though we do have two. <laughs> you do have two. It's the Swami. We have crystal ball. <laughs> times two. I won't add the S on the end of it, but we have our crystal ball. But I heard... If you that love the Swami, hit the like button right now. If you love the Swami, retweet the show right now. I heard that there was two questions that you wanted to ask the Swami to predict what might happen. Um, you uh -oh. don't remember him. Uh -oh. <laughs> should have wrote him. <laughs> no, you should have wrote it down. Do you remember him? No, he doesn't okay. remember them. So can maybe... Slip, can you slip into my DMs and send me those questions? Maybe the question you wanted to ask the I, Swami, maybe... Where are values going for the rest of the year? No, okay. that's what not, it, wasn't Swami? it. Why don't you let me, Swami, finish? I'm sorry. Uh, how many of the sales year to date in which county had the most, had the most single family attached? Okay. Right? Remember that? Okay. You remember? You got it? You remember that? Uh, and then the second one that he's supposed to ask the Swami is where do you think the total number of sales are going to be at the end of 2023 for, for uh, you want me to send this to you? Yeah, you want no, me to text yeah, yeah, please text this to me. <laughs> or tell Judah, and then Judah can ask uh, him. Yeah, okay. All right, okay. Ask the question. Should you take the hat off and be Keith and then go back to Swami? No, because then it, it's going to mess my hair oh, up. I'm not going to do that. All right, set the stage, Swami. Where are we going to go? Yeah. What's the first so, prediction you have? So, look, crystal ball. Crystal ball. Where's the smoke machine? you got a smoke machine. I do, I do, I do, I do. That would be sick. I'm sweating underneath okay, the Swami. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, Swami. So, go. look, I think single fam Swami thinks single family detached homes, no new construction, we're going to hit about 2,500 sold, which is r keeps us right at this 215. The Swami <laughs> believes... I love this. The so Swami much. believes. God, I love Keith. The things we do. I love you. I love you too. You're brother. a good man. Uh, 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 well, are uh, any of the Smith women watching? Right I've now? been called a lot of things, but yeah. So anyway, so the reason this is important, Swami thinks this is important, is is to set expectations. Oh. I think we're going to be at a volume equal to 2015, and if I was to th to wave my magic wand over here, I think single family detached. The car footprint, no new construction. We're going to hit about 2,500 units. That's my prediction. That's a Swami, you know, plus or minus about that, which puts us right just a skosh over 2015 value. And why is that so important? Why is that so important, Jerry? Tell us, Swami. Because we have to do business a little bit differently. Yeah. Right? You've got to have your skill sets to bring to the table. And it was interesting. The Swami was doing some reading today. On 2022 NAR home buyers and sellers generational trends. And it's very interesting. They asked all buyers to, how many times a buyer recommends their agent. It's 36. That's, excuse me, none is 36. The, the times recommended since buying is a medium is only one. The, I guess the point I'm trying to get to is we got to get back to this business of connecting with people in order to get there. It's pretty scary when eight, almost 80% of people that are um, buy, help agents that are, that are working with real estate agents, folks that are working with real estate, can't remember their agent's name. I can't remember my own name, but that's, that's for a different reason. That's terrifying. So it's, I can't, I, I've got the stat is? in here. Why do you think that is? Re give that stat again. What percentage of... So 36% of all buyers would have not recommended their... How many times has buyer recommended their agents? None is 36%. Oh my gosh. What was the other stat? Uh, so the other stat was times recommended since buying the median is one. It, it's just... It's just that and the other stat is, I don't have it in front of me, the exact number, but over 80% of buyers or sellers can't remember their agent's name. 
Now, why is that? Um, because they don't do a good job following up with their client post-closing. They only utilize the client as if they're shearing a sheep for one sweater, um, as opposed yeah. to realizing that they have to continue to maintain contact with the sheep because the sheep continues to produce leads and or sweaters for the future. So our business is all about pipeline. And all business is all about pipeline. Correct. That is true, actually. My business is all about. It's pipeline. all about. It's yeah. all about. It's all about pipeline. It's hundred percent. But anyway, it's just which is an interest, interesting stat. And the other thing, the Swami was asked last year to date, seventy eight percent all the single family at detached homes were in Albemarle County, and that's an important tat, tat, stat because. Typically, that's where more affordability goes. But in Albemarle County, 78% of all the sales were in um, Albemarle County. 20 of them were in Charlottesville. Nine were in Fulvana. Two were in Louisa. Three in Nelson. And you want to know how many in Greene County? Tell us. A fat goose egg. Oof. Zero. That's because they're not building them yet. But Stanley Martin Homes is in the process of building. We so love Stanley Martin. That. So that was the Swami. My head is sweating. So, it looks great. This so, is a new segment of the show. So it's, it's, it's a swami the thing. The viewers and listeners have found an uh, error with the listing. An error? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Can, can the swami say goodbye? Yes. The Thank swami. you. Do you but look, we want to do this in the future. So if you want to ask the swami something, we will go swami ahead. Swami says. We'll, sw swami says, and we'll go ahead and do that. But at the moment, uh, your $125 lights are pretty hot. I reflect know. off of the gold. A lot of people, a lot of people, the, the set is very, very hot, about 10 degrees warmer than literally behind Judah. And a lot of folks don't realize that. Judah rolls his eyes, but would you not say it's much hotter here than over there? Uh, clearly, I mean, I'm you, sweating. You sit here, he sits there. <laughs> Have yeah. you ever sat there? He has not. That's not uh, true. Has he sat here before? I think he sat maybe once or twice. Yeah, yeah. I, this is way hotter than over there. 28% uh, cash. I, I don't get that. This, I think they found an error. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> all right. So Carly and Jamie, Carly Wagner and Jamie Turner are bantering on the comment section, making everyone sharper on this listing. I've shared the listing everywhere. Um, Carly says the zoning on the listing says it's R1. And they're only offering 2.5% to a buyer agent. Yeah. Jamie says, yeah. I looked on the GIS and I see the zoning is R3, yeah. which is professional residential for yeah. Gordonsville Town Zoning. Carly says, ooh, the listing might be wrong then. And then Carly said, uh, and Jamie then said, under facts and features on Zillow, other property information it has is the R3. Carly then says, agents don't want to hear this, but the major reason I got my license is because I was disappointed and wronged by multiple local agents. There are good agents, but for some clients, the standard of care for realtors doesn't compare to other professions. You want to touch that? I think the Swami needs to touch that one. Okay. But, but um, and, yeah. And yeah. So it's... It Carly, thank you. They so. have seemed to find uh, an issue with how the property is classified with the zoning. So and they've also highlighted that they're only offering a 2.5% commission for a buyer's agent. Well, A, first thing out of the box, it doesn't matter what the compensation is on it. You should be taking care of your client regardless of the percentage of compensation. So if somebody is not showing that home because of 2.5% versus 3%, shame on them. Right. I would I, imagine that happens, though. Well, there's, there's a work around that because you're supposed to have a buyer-broker agreement with your client, which is what I do, and ours is 3%. So if they're at 2.5%, then we have to have a 0.5% conversation with, with the buyer. That doesn't mean we're going to charge them that. We'll accept it just to do business and, and develop relationships because, you know, back to that number, 36%. How do you get business in this business? It's referral, 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 referral. And how do you do that? We'll talk about that for another show. But Carly is hitting on something that... Oh, she's all over it. Carly has been hitting on something that I've been ruminating. Like that word? Ruminating. Ah, oh, that's very good. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I thought I impressed myself. Ruminating on this, on how to come up with a series of shows to help the level of professionalism without kind of crossing the line and going to uh, MLS or license jail on that end of it, because we don't want to impact 
uh, you know, cross any lines on that end of it. But yeah, there's the level of professionalism um, is interesting. But if Carly, if you look at the, you look at the very bottom of the listing, it says this: all information, regardless of source, should be verified by personal inspection and/or with the appropriate professionals. This information, blah 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 blah, basically says it's guaranteed, but not. Excuse me, it's not guaranteed, and so forth and so on. There's a disclaimer on the end of it. Ultimately, what happened? and I will get myself into trouble. Okay. Ultimately, what has happened, there was an out-of-area real estate agent out of Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. I can tell you exactly where they're from. Uh, Premier, hold on a second. Uh, oh, look at this. It's, it's, own, it's a LLC that owns the property, by the way. Uh, where are they at? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, actually, uh, they're, they're out of Gordons, Gordonsville. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm. Uh, so, you know, they should know. <laughs> they should know. Okay. 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 Let's, get the, let's get the Swami back How here. about that 28 How about those Mets? <laughs> How about this is an agent in car. This is a local agent. No, it's worse. Their this is a hometown is a agent right down the street. <laughs> down the street, yeah. I yeah. Know. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -oh. Well, maybe we just made things better and maybe that they... Uh -oh. Maybe they can go ahead and change it to, to R3 because that's I just looked at it. I mean, literally, when you look in the MLS, there's a direct connection to the um, GIS. Bed, Jamie said a three-bedroom, one-bath next door sold for 226 on June 1. Yeah. There's got to be a serious cosmetic issue or some kind of foundational something of well, significance here. So, so, so these are very one-dimensional conversations. And look at you've got to do your homework. It's like the property on we look on Fifth Street, yeah, right? Where it's like, how is Bill Howard's listing that has seven units you can do if you tear down this thing at three hundred thousand plus asking? 15 by special use permit. How is this for sale? And it's been on the market for 200 plus days in the urban ring. Keith did a little investigation. That property on 5th Street, like literally right where pr there's 5th Street and it's right behind the pro right in front of the prospect neighborhood on 5th Street. He did some investigation. What did you find? I found that three quarters of the property is in the floodplain. Yeah. And so not a developer would touch it. Yeah. It's just, it's just probably the best use of the lot is one house. Yeah, plus you've got an entrance corridor that you got to go through, yada, yada. It's just... You're on the road. Correct. It is the 55 entrance. 55 miles an hour. <laughs> well, it is the entrance corridor. Yeah. But yeah, so it's, 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 it's interesting, but yeah, they... Uh, yeah, I, I would I would see um, strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. Uh, <laughs> look that is the 100... So the 125... That's the one. That's the one you got to look at. Not... Don't look at this one. Look at the $125 one. And if you stare at it long enough, not only will your sneeze go away, but you might go partially blind. Well, I'm kind of there already, I, so. <laughs> stare at it long enough, you might go partially blind. Yeah, but I'm the, like, I mean, but doesn't they're look, so strong, are they not? Does it, doesn't that look kind of, kind of weird? On, I mean, it makes you look like Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder <laughs> doing the talk show over here. Uh, and those I, guys are super cool cats. I, I, I'll, take, I I'll take that any day, every I'll day. I'll take it twice on Sundays. That's right. Yeah, so, so I, I think that's what you got going on here. Um, it's interesting. I, I think, I think that has some commercial opportunities to it, because I think it is directly across the street. Hold on a second. Let me well, look no, at the map. No, you just put it on the feed. It's directly the back backs up to Main Street. Uh, well, what I'm Jamie doesn't think he says that. I think it takes a unique buyer to purchase it. I don't think you can get a residential loan on this property. There is not a fridge or stove, from what I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back to the conversation about Fifth Street, right? You got to get in there, get eyes on it, got to do your homework. That's why you need a trusted advisor. That's why I, you know, I've been saying this for 500 shows, right? I started it off 500 shows ago. This thing I'm holding in my hand is iPhone. Isn't going to be able to do all that hard work. At some point, you got to get eyes on it. At some point, you've got to get. I, I just, we were talked about shoe it. leather. We Boots talked on about street. it on Friday referral. Right, um, I did another referral over this weekend out west. Nice with, with it, and we connected with an. And it's actually out in the Seattle way. We connected with an agent. I had the agent get feet on, uh, boots on the job. Looked at it, put the connection to it, on on it. So, yeah. Uh, but you think, man, man, I love. I, 
I, I absolutely love driving down. Course was amazing. Main One of the most charming main streets in America. But I think I think that was a retail at one point in time. You could just tell by the storefront that's facing the way I'm looking at it anyway on GIS, the way it's facing the uh, uh, main or main or 33 on that uh, main street. Uh, you know, it's like this classic storefront down below, and the apartment is on the second story. But I just think the way it's located and zoning, it it needs a special buyer for sure. I love it. I love the case studies. Keith loves the case studies. We them. all love the case it's studies. It's interesting. The tax value on that's three hundred and fourteen dollars. Uh, three hundred fourteen thousand. Dude, that's exactly what I would do. Yeah. What Jamie's saying. He's saying Airbnb this bad boy right next to the two thirty one brewery scene. Two thirty one guys. I I can't say too much about this. But that's a cash buy, then. That's oh, I mean, he's already highlighted. You're going to struggle to get cash. a loan for this. It's a cash buy, yeah. cash retrofit. I'm choosing, I'm choosing words carefully here for the first time I'll show. <laughs> um, there's a small group of stakeholders fortunate to be at the table, yours truly, that are looking to take the 231 brand and take it to the level of the 151 brand. So expect the 231 moniker, Route 231. You got Keswick, you got Mary Mill, you got Clifton, you got Castle Hill, you got Patch. We're going to take this corridor, brand it, promote it, and make it How was the an institution like 151. What's that? How was the turnout at the oh, festival? Epic. Yeah. We're going to have the Castle Hill general manager and uh, the owner. Did they have like a, like a 10K race or 5K race? No 10K race. Mm -hmm. Live music, bands, tastings. They're going to announce how many meals that they, for the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank, it's I, I don't, it's thousands of meals. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know the exact number. We're talking, what was the number Rob wanted to? He came on the show last, last week. Do you remember with Millie? How many, how many the goal of meals well, for, that they well, wanted for, to first raise? First of all, anything Millie does. I think that. it was like 100,000 meals for the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. Something like that. I don't know if you can find that stat. I'm not sure how you can find that stat without listening to the show. Um, anyway, what Jamie's saying is you take this, you Airbnb it, yeah. and, you, and you're on the front lines of 231 as folks like us make this Route 151? Uh, not only, yes, you're going to do it. I believe it in my heart. It, it makes sense on that end of it. Um, but even just towing it into an Airbnb right now, just for what's existing there, just on the main street, right? It's a pretty awesome place. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, Travis Hackworth is watching in Danville. He's the mayor of Danville. It's all about the legwork, correct, Keith? I saw a property that was 32 acres, looked good on paper, but heavily wooded. Get to the property in huge ravine straight down the middle. Yeah. The cost to infill would have been massive. Yeah. That's from Travis Hackworth, who legitimately is the largest champion of Dan Vegas, Danville, of anyone I know, and that includes Lee Volkler. Was that, a, was that an intentional thing? Dan or? Vegas? Yeah, yeah that's I, the nickname. Yeah, I like it. Dan I Vegas. Like it. Dan I like, Vegas. I like it. Danville is got tremendous positive momentum behind it. Um, 231, remember the brand 231, ladies and gentlemen. You're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars is being invested into creating this brand in Keswick. I'm so gonna put it that way. So how'd the Swami do today? Did, did, I think the did, Swami was on point. Did we, need to, we need to work on the Swamis a little bit, but we're gonna- No, with, we're how, gonna, the Swami's gonna have um, smoke around him, the smoke, the smoke machine. <laughs> There's the Swami here needs a shawl of some kind. Yeah. Like a shawl. Got it. Maybe a, the Swami had a necklace. The Swami had a necklace. And evidently multiple people want to see the Swami in a spandex stop, jumpsuit stop, stop. like Diamond <laughs> Dallas Page. Stop. <laughs> if you wear a Diamond Dallas Page wrestler jumpsuit on this show, stop this show it. will go viral. Yeah. It will go viral. You may go to jail. I might go to jail. You might go to jail. I literally, I literally. You may I be get, in prison. I may get arrested. You may be in prison. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Remember when Batman and Robin were walking up and down the downtown mall? Yeah. That was fun. You, so, and, I, you and I have no shame. No. no None God, whatsoever. God forbid. God forbid. I don't even know, I don't even know how to how spell. How do you spell? <laughs> I was going to say it. Oh, did you ever see the, did that. you ever see the skit that, Tom Cruise and oh, what's the other actor's name that that was playing? Anyway, you got to Google it. Um, oh, guy, the guy who did Tropic Thunder. What was his? What was the actor's name? Uh, ben Seth. Seth. No, Ben Stiller. 
yeah. Stiller, Ben, Th- ben, ben Stiller. Ben Stiller and Cruz, so he, he, they did a parody, and they were doing that every time Cruz would start saying anything, he would finish the sentence and stuff like that. But anyway, but um, I've got a hard stop, unfortunately, oh, and it is 1130. It is. Oh, my but, God. But, but I, I, know, looked- I know. I just looked at it that way. I've got, a, I've got an wow. appointment. I got an appointment, and I'm trying to do the strawberry, strawberry, going? strawberry, strawberry. Uh, I've got a Zoom call that I, I need to do, and Yona and I are heading down to the Beach, Virginia Beach, Virginia Beach, for a Keller Williams uh, Regional Summit. I'm actually really excited about it. Um, I'm, I've, I've not been asked to speak, which is great, so I actually will be able to participate in it and do a little bit of communication and chatting with my fellow Keller Williams Regional. It's the whole Virginias and the West Virginia folks on it. So I'm excited about doing it and uh, spend a couple of days uh, connecting and with my fellow agents. And then I'll be back on Friday, which I'm still trying to put together this this political thing. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm struggling on connecting people, but you're going to help me with that. Okay. Okay. Um, Real Talk with Keith Smith online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. You guys want some insider information? Scoop up some real estate around 231 and do it within the next 18 months. I like that shirt today. I didn't get a chance to say that. In the next 18 months. Ladies and gentlemen, Judah Wittkauer, Keith Smith, Carly. Jerry Miller. We got to think of a name for Carly. Real Talk with Keith Smith presented by Yes Realty Partners, Interstate Service Company, and the trusted advisors that you can, can you can trust on the supply chain of real estate. Pull, real talk with keysmith.com. Partners, pull it down. Please, 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 please. Um, if you don't support them, maybe we won't sit here and have fun. We love, <laughs> we love having them. fun. We love having fun. Judah. And Keith, I'm trying to do the Jared. strawberry, strawberry, but we've got to wrap up before I have another I, one. I see, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> oh, no, I'm stopping you. I'm literally Sorry. trying. Um, the I Love Seville shows up in 58 minutes. So long, everybody. Well done. Oh, I love. Uh, I love. So fun. Yeah, I so enjoy it. Each other.